It's crazy. And so all of these people that we were just talking about, they get less than 1% of the money that we give to tell them about Jesus. And yet we spend all of this money on just one day. Look at this. Let me give you some other statistics that are a little sobering. Almost 7 billion people on the planet. Okay, 7 billion. We're, we're almost to that point here at 2012. Two-thirds of the world does not know God through Jesus Christ. Two-thirds of the 7, point, or 7 billion people don't know Jesus. That's a lot of people. There are over 526,000 kids every day who die from a lack of water. 526,000 kids who die every day, not just once a week, every day. Today, 526,000. Tomorrow, 526,000 kids, kids your age, kids younger than you, will be dead because they don't have clean water. It averages out to 15 seconds. Somebody got to watch? Somebody, somebody got to watch a timer? Okay. Let's, let's, let's time 15 seconds. We've got to get it set up. Too many apps. <laughs> you got it? Okay, here we go. Start it now. That's 15. That kid just died. And the time that we were trying to get to that and the time that it happened, two kids were dead. I want you to understand that this is real. That there are kids who are dying right now while we're in this place and it's a nice place and we have access to water, we can go to the bathroom. It's like there are people dying. I want you to understand that. And these are people that God loves. And when we have a day like Valentine's Day coming up, and we don't have a problem going out and spending money left and right and buying gifts for people that, that we love and we should. But let me ask you this. Would you be willing to give some of that money? Or what if you even had another day? If you, if you just set up another day for love, and, and maybe instead of celebrating it by giving each other something, maybe you would just give it to another missionary group or to a homeless person. Why not, why not just take on that project and say, you know what, I'm just going to, instead, I, I'm going to have my own Valentine's Day. It's going to be, you know, February 29th or whatever, you know, because this year we've got 29 days. February 29th, and I'm going to celebrate love, and I'm going to go do something for a homeless guy who can't repay me, who's, who doesn't know me, who's not going to be able to do anything for me. I'm just going to go and serve them. Look at this. It would only take $10 billion or thereabouts, $10 billion dollars, for the poorest of the world to have clean water. That's less than what we spend on Valentine's Day. And, and the whole world could have clean water. Look at this. 13 billion or thereabouts could provide sanitation and clean water for everybody. And we spend more than that to celebrate love. And we talk about how we love God and we talk about how we love other people and yet we, we can't even give enough money to equip the whole world with water. And in the U.S. we'll spend more than that on one day. I think our values are a little messed up. You see, if you're going to be an agent of change, and I said this today in our seminar, you have to be a changed agent. There has to be something different about you there's got to be something different about the way that you choose to live your life. And you don't live the same way that everybody else lives. And you don't do the same things that everybody else does. And, and it's like the things that are important to you and the values that you have are just completely and entirely different. Because you follow Jesus and his kingdom is upside down and it's inside out and it's, you know, backwards from everybody else. You have to be willing to do that if you're really going to make a difference. But you see, you can be that agent. You see, it's like God is coming to you and he's saying, hey, this is your mission if you choose to accept it. This is your mission. 
If you choose to accept it, but you have to choose to accept it, you can be an agent of change if you're willing to be a changed agent. Tonight, what is God trying to say to you? How does God want you to do something about all of these numbers that we've just looked at? The thing is, is that you can do something about it. You see, change is happening to you. And I don't know why I have a question mark there. But it's a statement. Change is happening to you. You're changing all the time. I mean, at night, you know, your hair grows. Well, for some of us, it grows. <laughs> You know, it's like your, your fingernails, your toenails, they grow at night. And, you know, and, and it's like, you know, every couple of months, you, the cheeks inside your mouth, you know, they, they, you, have, you replace your cells. And every couple of months, you know, it's like you, you just have brand new skin. And, and every few years, you know, I think it's like every five to seven years, you are completely and entirely a new person. Your bones have changed. Your skin has changed. You've gotten taller. You've, you know, you've matured. I mean, there's just all of these things. Change is happening to you all the time. You are changing right now. There are things going on inside of you, inside your body that you're not even aware of. Change is happening to you. But let me ask you, is change happening because of you? Is anything changing because of you? It can. Things can happen because of you. Because you exist. Because you make different choices than everybody else. Change can happen. You can bring the change. But you have to choose to do that. You see, is change happening because of you? Is anybody ever going to know that you were here? Is anybody ever going to know that you are a follower of Jesus? Recently I listened to a book and I would encourage and challenge all of you to do it. It's by Max Lucado. And it's called Outlive Your Life. And in that book, he's talking about all of these things about really what's going to live beyond you. What, what is it that's, that, that's going to remain? You see, Jesus, when, when he was living here on earth, he said, he said, I want you to go and bear fruit. But not just, not just any old fruit. I want you to bear fruit that's going to remain. You see, Jesus was talking about outliving your life. Jesus was saying this, give something that's going to that's gonna stay beyond you. What's going to stay beyond you? What's going to live beyond you? You know, we're talking about how much God loves us. And there's no doubt that He does love us. John 3.16, the Bible says, for God so loved the world. But you've probably all done this little practice before where you take out the world and you put your name in there. Because, see, the world is made up of individuals. People just like you and me. And so it's like, it is good to be reminded that, that God does love me. But you see, that love is not meant for us just to absorb and soak it up like a sponge. It's meant for us to give it out. And you see, when we understand that God loves us, we don't hold it to ourselves. We don't just say, oh, you know, you know, I'm just keeping this love myself. It's so good. I, I can't give it away. No, that's not the way God's love works. God's love is not meant for us to just keep to ourselves. It's meant for us to give out to others. Tonight I'm going to share this song with you, and, and I did it last year. It's a song that a lot of people, you know, they ask me to do all the time. And, and it's a very, you know, powerful song. But it talks about and it helps us see how much God does love us. I don't know if you're aware of all the things that happened to Jesus when he was being crucified. But he went through an incredible amount of what we would consider torture. I mean, in fact, if it were happening today, you know, there would be people who would be, you know, rising up and saying, there's just no way we could allow this kind of thing to happen. I mean, if, if, if we saw someone who was being pummeled in the face that they were just sitting there and people were walking by punching them in the face as hard as they could you would probably want to intervene if you saw somebody sitting there and they were getting their beard ripped out of their face you would probably want to intervene you would probably say you know what i, I cannot allow that to happen if you saw somebody who was being tied to a post and they had these guys who we're standing a distance with these clubs that had strips of leather with pieces of bone and glass and rock. If you saw somebody whipping another person with that, and, and those pieces of bone and glass and rock were literally ripping the skin off of their back, 
you would probably say, I cannot allow that to happen. And then you were to see that person's back, and it would look like hamburger meat. And their insides and their intestines would, would be out. I mean, it would be too much for you to handle. You would, I mean, you would, you would probably turn away. And if you didn't turn away, and if you were, had the guts, you would run in and you would say, no, I'm not going to let this happen. But here's the crazy thing about it, is that Jesus would not let you stop it. You see, Jesus would not, even though he had the power to block every fist, even though he had the power to stand up and with one thought, end it all, even though he had the power, he chose to not exercise it. He chose to allow himself to be beaten because he loved us, because he loved you. They took and they put a robe on his back and then they brought him out before all the people and they mocked him and they said, oh, this is the king of the Jews, right? This is the one that has all the power, right? They wove together a crown of thorns and they placed that on his head. And his eyes are swelling shut. He hasn't had sleep for about a day. He's dehydrated. Then they give him a cross where he's going to have to carry it to the place where he's going to die. And this cross weighs somewhere between 75 and 125 pounds. Jesus is just like completely and entirely exhausted. People, the people who were cheering him as the king are now cheering him as the one that God has forsaken. They laugh at him. They kick dust up in his face when he falls. There's a guy named Simon who was happened to be in the crowd. He was commissioned by one of the soldiers to carry the cross the rest of the way for Jesus. And they got him to Golgotha, Calvary, the place of the skull. They took these spikes and they drove them through his hands. And they crossed his feet. And they drove another spike through the second, second metatarsal on his feet. And they used his ropes and ladders to lift him up and then dropped it down into a socket that was in the ground. And when it did that, it pulled his bones out of joint. And again, if you were to see this, if you were to see this, you would not only be horrified, you would be thinking, how can this happen? How can this happen? And the Bible tells us clearly, Jesus said, He said, no one takes my life from me. No one. The beating, that didn't kill Jesus. The loss of blood, that didn't kill Jesus. The nails in His hands and His feet, that did not kill Jesus. The spear in His side did not kill Jesus. Jesus said, no one takes my life from me. I willingly lay it down. When Jesus was on the cross, he said seven things. And one of those seven things was a prayer for you and me. He said this. He, it was crazy, but he said it. He said, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. When Jesus was on the cross, you know what was on his mind? The world. The world. You. You sitting in this room tonight were on his mind. Somehow through the omniscience of God, he could see us in this place tonight. And he says, these are people I love. The 11,565 people groups, those are the people I love. Every person through the course of history is someone that I died for. And even though I love you, I love them too. I'm going to share this song with you. It's called Watch the Lamb. At the end of the song, I'm going to ask you not to clap. We're going to have a time of reflection, and time to respond. I want you to seriously consider two things while you're watching this. It's one, how much God loves you. And then secondly, how can you show the world? God loves them too. Watch the land.